Hey guys, this is Lala Legacy, and welcome back to another episode of Seabed. So let's jump right back in. What are you doing in a place like this? Nothing. <sighs> Mayuko let out a sigh. Let's here, let's go take that bath. I passed by Mayuko. She followed behind me. I submerged myself in the hot water while resting my head on the edge of the tub. I could hear the sounds of Mayuko washing her hair. I grasped at the ponkan toy floating in the tub, submerged it in the water, then let go while watching the ripples it created as it shot up. Kozue regarded me in silence. Once I began feeling warmer, I climbed out of the bath and sat on its edge. As I counted the number of ponkan floating in the tub, Mayuko finished washing her hair and placed her basket on the ground with a thud. I could hear her wet footsteps as she walked towards the bath. The round yellow pon or ponkan sluggishly swayed in the calm water. Mayuko submerged herself up to her shoulders and shifted her gaze to me. It was, her hair was getting too hot. I slid down from the edge, leaving the cool air for the hot water. My skin warmed up instantly. I could feel the heat traveling through my neck to my head. If you cool yourself off at proper intervals, every time you return to the bath it will feel as good as your first time, and you never get too hot either. Really? I closed my eyes as my cheeks warmed up. You warm yourself in the bath, then you cool down sitting on the edge, rinse and repeat. You manage the temperature of the outer layer of your skin, heating and cooling it as though you were making a mille, a mille file out of yourself. It's the elegant way of enjoying a bath. You're, you're going to catch a cold like that. Uh, oh wait, no, you're going to catch a cold like that, sorry. I don't think you need to worry about that, said Kozue as she stood up. Yeah, Kozue knows that this is the healthy way to enjoy a bath. Or, enjoy a bath. Wait a second. I know what you did there, Kozue, I exclaimed, raising my fist. Are you leaving already? Kozue nodded at Mayuko's question and left the room. I spent a few moments gazing at the white, vapor-colored windows when a cool drop of water fell on my forehead. You're going to get your hair wet. Mayuko came over to me and tucked some loose locks of hair peeking out from beneath my towel back under it. Your face is, er, your face is red like a boiling octopus. I may have spent too much time in the water. I think it's about time you got out then. Would you like me to wash your back? Yay, of course! Think of it as my thanks for shoveling the snow. <laughs> I guess hard work does pay off from time to time. I got out of the bathtub, splashing hot water all around me, and sat down on the closest wooden stool by the shower. Mayuko brought a stool of her own, sitting down on it behind me. Oh, goodness. I like it a little rough. Understood. Mayuko covered the washcloth in soap and pressed it against my back. She took hold of my shoulder with her other hand. Uh, look, I know I said it should be rough, but I don't want it to hurt, okay? I'm just kidding. She began slowly brushing my back up and down with just the right amount of strength. Does it hurt? No, it's just right. It feels good. I see. I exhaled a breath, raised my knees, and rested my chin on them. Are you tired? Nah, it's not like that. Snow never piled up this much back where I'm from, so if anything, shoveling it was a nice new experience for me. I've never seen so much snow here in the past, to be honest. Guess I won't have many more chances like that, huh? Yes, unfortunately. 
I see. Well, not like I'm the one concerned. Mayuko's hand paused as she considered my words for a moment. Do you have any itchy spots? You sound like a barber. What will you do if I say I do? I let out a laugh. Don't blame me if you won't be able to sleep on your back tonight. Have you ever or have you ever said you had an itchy spot at a barber's? No. I have. Mayuko let out a gasp of surprise. You actually had them scratch your head? Yeah. But then the rest of the experience didn't go well. They totally rushed the dryer part afterwards. I think they thought of me as an annoying customer and wanted to get it over with as soon as possible. I've always thought it was more like a figure of speech than an actual proposal. But it feels good! I wanted them to do it again. Well, I suppose I can see what you mean. It feels good when another person scratches you for real! How does your back feel? Real nice. I wish we could continue this for hours. I see. After that, Mayuko also washed my arms and shoulders. You're being awfully nice today, Mayuko. I've been nice since before I was born. I couldn't help but chuckle. Really? Oh, didn't you know? Half of me is made of pure, undiluted kindness. Never heard that one before. How did you find out? I got a blood test here. You can tell that from blood? Uh... Leukocytes. Erythrocytes, hemoglobin, protein, and kindness. And in your case, kindness takes up half of the whole? Yes. What's the average for a person? Unfortunately, I'm quite far above the average. I guess I'm lucky to have a nurse like you then. We both chuckled. Our laughs reverberated across the bathroom walls. Cold air enveloped my body as I opened the door to the dressing room. I glanced at the weight scales by the door. I passed by them, took the basket with my change of clothes from the shelf, wrapped myself in a towel, and put on my underwear. As I slid into, or into my shirt and turned around, I saw Mayuko putting on her socks after wiping herself with a towel. Do you always start from the socks? Yes. That looks pretty indecent. Mayuko promptly put on her underwear and shirt. I always feel like my heat escapes my body through my feet. Really? And honestly, I feel the or I feel the way you think is far more indecent. Really? <laughs> oh, Takako. Such a dirty-minded person. I think it's time. Sanai sat up in bed and took the thermometer out of her mouth. You still seem to have a high fever. Sanai, her cheeks flushed, regarded me with an empty gaze. I want to read a book. No way! You need to get some sleep. Sanai gave me an indignant look through her, her, her half-open eyes. You really like books, don't you? Why is that? You mean... What I like about books? I nodded. I like a lot of things. I don't know if you can or if I can sum it up. Well, what's good about the current book you're reading then? It's an old book. It's old. Okay. Which means it's full of things I don't know, like descriptions of lands I'd never seen before. But I enjoy that kind of lack of knowledge. As my, imi er, la, la, as my imagination always fills in the blanks. If I die, burn me with the books on the shelf. There are still some I, oops, there are still some I haven't read yet, she added. I could do that if you want, but you won't be able to read them if I burn them. You think I could read books after my death? I have no idea what happens after death. You don't believe in heaven and hell, right? It, or I might not look it, but I'm actually scientifically minded. I don't believe you'll be able to continue constructing thoughts after your brain dies. It's fun to think about the afterlife, but none of the potential ideas make much sense from where I stand. 
I put the thermometer away and soaked the towel I'd prepared in a bowl of ice water. I always start thinking about these things when I don't feel well. My health isn't exactly in tip-top shape, she added. Aren't you, or aren't you scared, Takako? Not really. As I said, it'd be fun if there was an afterlife, but if all... Er, but if it all works like I expect it to work, you won't even be able to feel fear, so what does it matter? I'm pretty sure some people would find the idea of not existing scary in itself. What's the point of doing your best in life if you're going to disappear anyway? Have you never thought of it like that? Well, you leave all sorts of things behind, I mean... Besides, the fact I might disappear one day doesn't change the fact that I exist here and now. I took the towel out of the bowl and wrung it so as not to splash the water all over the room. One time, or one time, when we were gazing at the stair or at the stars together, why would you stare at the stairs? <laughs> Anyways, uh, Sachiko said that their light uh, was hundreds and hundreds of years old. In other words, hundreds of years will pass before we're seen from over there. Nothing that ever existed can disappear completely. I see. And I agree. You should sleep. I'm sure you'll be fine by tomorrow. What time is it? It's around nine, I think. Oh, there's also the idea that you might become a ghost. That just might be the f most fun option. If I turn into one tonight, I'll come to your room to relax. Don't forget to make some kind of signal so I know it's you. In that case, I'll pick up coins like that ghost in town. All right, I'll make sure to leave some on the table. Guess I can rest easy then. Good night. Yeah, good night. Oh, no, Sanai, please don't die. I put the cold towel on Sanai's head as she finally lay down. Sanai let out a relieved breath and slowly closed her eyes. I opened my eyes to realize I was laying in, or lying on a bed. As I sat up, a sudden and sharp pain ran through the core of my skull. With its empty shelves, a bed covered in blinding white sheets, and a window that opened to the vast sky above the port town, the room felt as lifeless as ever. The sky that was orange before I closed my eyes had turned dark blue. I rubbed my left arm, uh, that had nearly frozen while I slept with no sheet on me. When I stood up, the pain in my skull returned. Eventually, I staggered out of Kozue's room with uncertain steps. Uh, I think I was going somewhere. I turned right and, er, and began descending the spiral stair uh, staircase. The light started blinking as I continued down or down toward the lobby. I changed them just the other day. I took one step after the other while leaning against the wall with my right arm. I passed by a few small pictures on the wall to reach the blinking light. It didn't seem like it had dimmed, at least. As I looked away, my vision suddenly grew completely dark. I could feel myself stepping on a hard, wet surface. I was back in the dark limestone cave. The wall I'd been touching had turned into rock before I knew it. I inhaled a lungful of cold, humid air to calm myself down. I slowly closed my eyes and opened them again. I was back on the spiral staircase. The light I'd changed the other day, and the familiar picture of a lake hung right next to me on the wall. I leaned against the wall with my back, and stared at the light for a few moments when I saw Mayuko descending the stairs above me. Huh? 
I caught her hand before she tumbled down the stairs. What are you doing there? Mayuko asked, pressing a hand against her chest. I thought there was something wrong with the light over here again, but it seems like it was just my imagination. I see. Mayuko straightened herself, so I let go of her hand. It's almost lights out time. Is it already that late? Well, check the clock in the lobby if you don't believe me. I shook my head. In that case, good night. Mayuko passed by me. Um. Mayuko turned around to face me as I addressed her. Can I sleep with you tonight? I gulped down the remainder of my cold tea and put the empty cup on the tray. I want to lay down the futon, so I'd appreciate it if you got out of the way. I stood up and continued to the kitchen with tray in hand. Meanwhile, Mayuko folded out or folded the table and prepared two futons behind me. After I lay down on the freshly laid futon, Mayuko tossed a sheet on me. I'm turning off the lights. Okay. Sure you won't need to go to the toilet? How old do you think I am? I partially peeked out from under the sheet to glare at her. Mayuko made a low chuckle. I'm just kidding. Anyway, I'm turning off the lights. Okay. The room momentarily turned orange and was swallowed by darkness as she pulled the cord. The night duty room's futons were kept in a closet, so they had a different smell compared to my bed. My brain had irrevocably co or connected, the ah, connected that smell to my Yuko by now. I yawned and considered the cord dangling from the ceiling. It looked like it was swaying. But when I looked at it in the re or in relation to the ceiling, I understood that wasn't the case. I had a lot on my mind, so I didn't feel sleepy at all. Um, are you sleeping? I asked in a barely audible t uh, voice. I'm not, Mayuko gave in after a long pause. What would you do if I disappeared? I rolled over to face her. Are you planning to leave? She asked, slightly raising her upper body. No, I'm speaking hypothetically, as in, you found my room empty once you went looking for me in, or in the morning, and I wasn't anywhere else in the sanatorium. What would you do then? With no word from you? With no word from me, yes. I'd look for you. I'd contact the police and we'd scour the mountains, I suppose. Then you'd get a piece of my mind once we found you. I see. Why ask me something like that, though? I just felt like it. Mayuko let out a sigh. Okay, well, no more of these questions, please. They're only going to make me depressed. Okay, I'll make sure to leave a message if I go anywhere. Please do. At times, however, you cannot be the master of your own fate. Are you sure you can make that promise so easily? Well, fine. I'll do it as long as it's within my power. Thank you. But I'm not sure if, or if I'll be strong enough. Would you please make up your mind? It's like you said. Sometimes you just don't have a choice. I suppose so. I rolled on my back and closed my eyes. The, lights, or the light clouds beyond the window looked like smoke in the moonlight. I remember staying over at my grandma's this one time. My grandparents and I uh, slept together in the same room. I rubbed my eyes in the middle of the night and got an eyelash stuck in it. I had to use the mirror above my head to try to get it out. Glancing at my Yuko, I saw her looking at me through drowsy, half-open eyes. It was the kind of mirror you could turn in various angles, but it was set up to face the closet for some reason. Anyway, I turned it toward myself, and then Grandma woke up and got really angry at me for doing that. Why was she angry? I don't know. You didn't ask? I was too scared to. I see. What do you think? Was that a scary story? I wouldn't say it was particularly scary. 
Really? It's true, though. Look, I got goosebumps just from remembering it. Maybe you have, or maybe you have to have been there to understand. But that is actually all the time that I have for this episode, guys. So if you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up down below. And if you haven't already, subscribe. By subscribing, you're becoming part of a legacy. I love you guys so, so much, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye!